Hey everyone, I'm Armazir and welcome to Hearts of Iron 4 Multiplayer Co-op with Kelvin. Hi everybody! And we're going to play as Belgium and the Netherlands. Yay, suicide! And <laughs> yeah, we'll try to not get rolled over by Germany in 1939 or 40, but no Don't promises. Worry. It's fine. We can beat the Germans. Yeah, no problem. Alright, well... Let's get things started. We have industry to build. Yeah, a lot. And very little space to build Actually, it. I'm surprised with how many factories Belgium starts. 12 civilian, or 12, yeah, 12 civilian factories. I start with 13, mm. so not much more. Yeah, and yeah. 6 military. Here's the real problem, though, is how little space we have. Yeah, actually, our main problem is going to be manpower. I start with 35,000 manpower, which is like nothing. Yeah, I only start with 19,000. Mm. To be yeah. fair, I can go over to Indonesia, say, hey, colonial divisions, mm -hmm. get destroyed. <laughs> there we go. Now I have 57,000. Much better. Clean, clean house in Indonesia. You should probably also consider doing that in your African colonies. Mm -hmm. Side note, you might be able to stash a few factories in your African colonies. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, possibly. Yeah, so... There. Now with my colonial divisions. Yeah, we, we don't have much manpower to work with. Uh, the good news is that right now we currently only use 1.5% of our recruitable manpower. And there's always scraping the barrel for 25%. Yep. True. So what we have now, we can get, uh, you know, as much as 2.5 times that. Mm-hmm. A little more. So. Or 20. Yeah, uh, so 15 times that or something. I don't know. Either way. So so we're not as bad off on manpower as you'd like to think, but in the early game, we're not going to be able to build a very big army. That's an understatement of the year. <laughs> Are you saying that we aren't supposed to be conquering the world? <laughs> I thought this is the world conquest as Benelux game. Yeah, seems legit. All right. Well, I'm about ready to uh, unpause you. Yep, I guess I'm ready. Yeah. I am unsurprisingly not going to be using my shipyards, everybody who will mm -hmm. yell at me in the comments about my free dockyards. <laughs> no, I don't have enough steel to bother using them. And two, yeah, you know what? Germany can have naval supremacy. Fuck it. But don't you want to beat the German fleet? <laughs> no, not really. Oh. Uh. I really wish I could figure out how to dismantle my battleships and, mm -hmm. like, get manpower back from them, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I don't have any. So, hey, you have an advantage there. At least you have some. I got zero. Yeah, I, <laughs> I just wish I could figure out how to delete a fleet. Uh, mm -hmm. Does leaky work? No, didn't think so. And I got whole 20 fighters. Go me. I don't have planes. Well, I'll take planes over a useless ship. Yeah, I have 22 submarines or something like mm. that I'd love to be able to use as well. But I also can't figure out how to rebase them across the world. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I've got a bunch of ships in Indonesia, but I just can't do anything with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and let's go to speed two and see how things go. Yeah. Oh, wow, you actually start with mechanized? Yep. Wow. Uh, not a lot of it. Wow. Or motorized. No, I have, are. like, whole one mechanized division or motorized division. To be fair, that's a, that's a whole uh, infinity billion percent more than I have. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not like they will win a war on their own. Uh, well, says the one who only has one border province to worry about. <laughs> I think one I'll mechanized probably, division will be perfectly fine. I'll probably end up having three. Yeah. Because Luxembourg. Let's be real. I mean, you could end up having a lot more depending on how badly France does. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't expect France to do very well. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. The Said thing everyone ever it. in history. <laughs> yeah. ne ne never trust your allies. Mm-hmm. That's a lesson that you, as a Polish person, have taken to heart. I mean, you saw that thing where France won't even attack Germany if the border is completely empty. 
I sent you that. Mm, yeah. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so I wouldn't expect France to do very well. That, that, hey, that's, you know what? I'm fine with them not attacking Germany. It just means mm -hmm. more German land for us. Divvy up the Reich. Yeah, or more Dutch land for Germany. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet, you. Hey, they uh, need living space, apparently. <laughs> Lebenschrum. Mm. I think that's, that's the German word I'm butchering, right? Yeah, you're probably butchering it. Mm. All right. So, I only start down 2,300 guns. That's not terrible. That's almost reasonable. I start with 4,610 weapons. What's your deficit, though? A few thousand. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's a lot easier to have a much smaller deficit when you don't have a massive army. Yeah. Now, I mean, I my, my army is pretty big considering how small I am. <laughs> yeah. Well, Belgium's needed it. Mm. Yeah. Uh. I got eight infantry divisions. I have a grand total of eight divisions. And I got infinitely more fighters than you. Yep. Yep. So, Which, uh, to be honest, probably aren't going to do a whole lot or they're going to get shot down. Hey, I don't know. I mean, may maybe, uh, you know, the RAF will do something to help you out. Mm. They will give me yeah. air experience. That's about all they will be useful for. Yeah. Since I don't really think you have the production to uh, dedicate to building more of them. Yeah, not really. I mean, I leave one production line with one factory just so that I'm building some for reserve. Mostly to get some air experience to use for variants later. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how much of a later there will be. I think it's either we mm. take Germany or Germany takes us. <laughs> but Maybe in that war against the Soviet Union it'll come in handy. Uh, that's, that's what I love about you, Marv. You're so optimistic and thinking ahead. Well, I mean, the Soviet Union usually gets an aggression pact with Germany. Uh, well, I'd left AI historical focuses on for this one, mm -hmm. so they will get a non-aggression pact with right. Soviets. So I think we'll need a plan better than we hope to not die. Uh, I mean, I've, I've got a pretty good plan. Mm -hmm. Like, I plan right now, build civilian factories for about a year, build mm -hmm. military factories for another year, and yep. then for about a year, build land forts. Yep. That's pretty decent plan, I like to think. And you have a lot of provinces to build land forts in. Yeah, I know. Like, at least the Seven. bottom half of my country is protected mm. by a river, sort of. Yeah, that kind of helps. Yeah. But the north part... Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of wide open plains. And Perfect Amsterdam route. is on that side, let's just say. Yeah, unfortunately, Germ unfortunately, Amsterdam's on the north side of the river. Mm, yeah. Otherwise, we could just hide behind the river. Yeah. And they are all plains, which is definitely not helping you. Yeah. At least I wide have some open forest. For German blitzkrieg. I mean, I only have one border province, and it's a forest, so that's yep. pretty good. You got the bloody Ardennes there protecting you. Mm, yeah. Then again, I suppose that was the thing. Nobody ever thought anyone would drive a bunch of tanks to the Ardennes. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, Paris was in German hands. Yeah. All right. In my game, when Germany declared war on France, France just completely melted. Yeah, I, I did a test game of this, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, before 1940 even rolled around, before they even started to go around the Maginot, they were through the Maginot and driving on Paris. <laughs> I'm just like, France? France? <laughs> oh, dear. Now, I'm hoping that won't happen again, but... Mm -hmm. You know. Good news, you appear to be able to mostly keep up on uh, speed three. So we'll actually get to go mm -hmm. to reasonable speed for the series. Nice. I wouldn't push it much beyond that. I mean, this is intercontinental multiplayer. I have but... Hall 1 General. And he's a mountaineer and a hill fighter. You know, for all these mountains Belgium has. I have a Panzer leader for all my tanks. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. 
Okay, and, and now I want to ask you this question. The mm -hmm. Panzer Leader has the uh, bonus, armor speed plus 5% hours. Mm -hmm. the, the bonus, I repeat, is 5% hours. That makes no sense. <laughs> it's It does. It's just written extraordinarily poorly and hard mm -hmm. to understand. In essence, I believe it means in kilometers mm -hmm. per hour. Okay. But for some reason, they decided to write hours. Right. I have no idea why. Mm -hmm. I also have Fortress Buster for all the forts I'll have to attack. <laughs> yeah. Hey, maybe you'll decide to take the Maginot line yourself. Yeah, a pair, when the Maginot <laughs> line just falls, we'll have to go back and retake it. <laughs> that does sound like a pretty likely scenario, to be honest. I know, that's the sad <laughs> part. <laughs> We have more faith in ourselves holding than France behind the Maginot. Yeah. <laughs> Poor France. Nobody believes in it. Uh. All right. You ever try actually playing France, by the way? Um, I have. Is it's it is it really actually hard easy. or does the AI just no. suck that bad? The the AI is just. <laughs> a, the, I. I want to call it bad, but that's an insult to bad AIs. Mm -hmm. Like, I, like I said, it lost the magic. <laughs> yeah. How does that happen? I mean, maybe it's done deliberately to keep it historical. <laughs> I, I have to assume so, but yeah, the the Maginot line for anyone counting uh, provides an attack penalty mm. of minus fifteen percent for each fort level, and there are mm. ten fort levels. Yeah. Uh, each a direction will uh, reduce it by 25%. Yep. But if you, there's nowhere on the Maginot line you can attack it from more than three directions. Mm -hmm. So Germany should always be attacking yeah. at negative 100%. Yeah. So you need a lot of bonuses to overcome it, basically. Yeah. yeah. There's literally no way it should ever be lost. Yeah. On top of that, it's all like hills and mountains. And then you kind of can't really attack it in the south because there's a river, and river is what, minus 68%, I think? Yeah, and then on top of that, on the other side of that, mountains. Mm. Yeah, so there's just Level no way you can do it. a river into the mountains. Yeah, and mountains are what, minus 60%, I think? Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah, so, so there's just no way. There's no way. Yeah, the, yeah like the flattest you get is mm. plains in the north. Yeah, there's there's one province of plains to break through. Yeah. That's that's your only hope. Mm -hmm. And you can attack it from two directions. Yeah, so, so, you, so you're taking a minus uh, 125%. Yeah, so that's pretty much the spot where you have to break through. Yeah. I mean, you have to get it below... You have to get the penalty... You have to get a bonus of at least, like, 26% to mm -hmm. even do damage. Yeah, yeah. So, it's pretty bad. Anyway, I should probably start my exercises. I totally forgot to do that. Mm-hmm. And then if they are even semi-competent and entrenched, there's just no way you're going to do it. <laughs> Don't worry, it's France. You don't have to worry about them being semi-competent. <laughs> you know, uh, Poland actually starts uh, with a general or field marshal that has 30% entrenchment bonus. It's actually quite nice. Yeah, uh, that's your saving grace right about there. Mm, yeah, yeah. Especially since you have grand battle plan, actually. Yeah, that, that stacks really well. Mm, Poland has some nice generals. There's also a field marshal that has plus 10% maximum planning bonus, which is also pretty good for offensives. Yeah. If you can get a, yeah, like in in your case with a field marshal like that, mm. since you can assign him to the entire army. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be like all over that. I'd be uh, grand battle planning. Mm-hmm. I've gotten to the point where uh, like you, you you can use uh, the battle plans and sometimes they're good. Yeah. But uh, I find a lot of the problem when you're doing like multi-person wars is mm -hmm. that like the front line just starts to shatter and break apart when people mm -hmm. start occupying different things. Mm-hmm. And so then you're stuck with like eight front lines and eight holes in the line after just like moving up three provinces. Yeah. It gets really awkward and then your troops don't function properly. I found it a lot easier to just let the uh, AI take shit and mm -hmm. then just demand it later for my fair share of the war score from them. Is there any real reason to give a shit about these African colonies? Uh, I mean, they do provide you with a bit of resources, mm. and you can stash factory there. Otherwise, no. Yeah, most of them don't have slots. Zero unlocked slots, zero one. They have mm -hmm. whole one. 
Hey, don't diss it. It's a whole extra factory. With a civilian factory in it. So they provided me with one civilian factory. Hey, that's a civilian factory. And At two least... tungsten. That's all the resources I get. Two tungsten. Yeah. My colonies are a little bit better. Mm. They provide me with rubber. <laughs> yeah. And oil. Rubber is nice. <laughs> Rub rubber is like the biggest bottleneck in this game. If you're not with the allies. Yeah, if you're like, with the allies, you're yeah. swimming in it, though. Yeah, good luck getting rubber if you're at war with the allies. Have fun with yeah. that. I've pretty much learned that if you want to fight the allies, you mm. better be willing to build a lot of uh, synthetic oil factories. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Or take the provinces with rubber. <laughs> yeah. You can always do that. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. There's one single province here with 268 rubber. Holy shit. <laughs> That's nothing. Look at friggin' uh, Singapore. 848. <laughs> so just invade Singapore and yeah. you solve all your that, rubber problems forever. Tungsten. Yeah. That's actually like, insane. There, there, There is 1,200 mm -hmm. resources in that province. Yeah. In one single province. How, yep. is, how is that even remotely balanced? I, I've come to the eventual conclusion that Singapore is single-handedly the most developed mm. region in the world. <laughs> yeah. More developed than the whole of England. Yep, apparently. It's just a giant rubber factory. Yep. Alright. So, have you thought much about which doctrine you're going to go down? I'm not quite sure. Let's I mean, see as far as I, I'm concerned... Let me check if I options. start with anything, because I don't think I do. No, I do start with one in the Grand Battle Plan. Ah, I see. I uh, I start with a blank slate on it. Mm-hmm. So... I mean... The plus 10 max entrenchment bonus will be nice early on. Yeah. That's a thing. Um... Grand Battle Plan isn't terrible, but what I don't like about it is that there are, like, no soft attack bonuses in there. Yeah, It's just the breakthrough. Oh, there's one soft attack bonus, plus 5%. Boo-hoo. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you can get down to level 3 superior firepower, I think it's mm. worth it, though, because you get all infantry, defense plus 20%. Yeah, that's probably better than the uh, entrenchment bonus from Grand Battle Plan. Yeah... Plus, you get the delay tactic mm. at level 2, which is actually pretty good. Are there a lot of land doctrine bonuses in this focus tree? Probably not, if I had to uh, guess. There's uh, there's the army and then doctrine 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. So you get a total of 3 doctrine bonuses. So y you can totally do it, yeah. Hold on, I'm not seeing it. It's uh, on, on the, the army. Oh yeah, I see it, yeah, on the far left. Yeah. You get army, doctrine, and doctrine too. Okay, so two bonuses. Three, actually. Our army effort gives you a doctrine bonus. Okay, that's not too bad then. I could yeah, probably get, make it to the third one. You get three equipment and mm. three art and three land doctrine bonuses, so it's actually pretty good. Yeah, I think I'll switch, yeah. especially since I already played until 1942 with superior firepower doctrine, and it's so damn good. It is. Oh, is it so good? Mm. It's probably the best doctrine line. Well, that's the thing. Like this, the the concept of superior firepower is mm. conservation of manpower and trading, yeah. uh, in, and trading your industrial capacity instead. Which, especially in our situation, is going to be pretty damn important. We simply yeah. do not have the manpower. Yeah, that's true. Mind you, we don't exactly have the industrial capacity either. But, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, whatever. We'll have to take land <laughs> to get more factories, that's what it is. I mean, hey, there, there's, a, there's a lot of factories right over the border. Yep. Like, that Rhineland there, that's got 10 factory slots right before, yep. right down below it. The Moseland has another 10 factory slots, and all the steel we'll need. Hey, there are a lot of factories in France as well. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. Um, that, might, uh, that might come into play eventually. Mm -hmm. Who knows? We, uh, we might... Uh, might uh, have to do some uh, invading. No. 
That said, as much as I'd like to invade France, I'm not going to worry about that yet. Far more important things to worry about. Like not being invaded by Germany. Yeah. Don't oh, yeah, I, and by the way, hmm? before anyone asks, uh, I would like to point out... Ooh. Uh, I'd like to point out that uh, we will be staying democratic. Mm-hmm. For, for, for hard mode. Shot. Yeah. Because going Our, fascist is the easy mode here. Yeah, go, going fascist is easy mode. Like, like uh, we had a bit of a conversation before we started recording mm -hmm. where uh, Marbazir got to look at the uh, default focus tree for the first time since he's only played Poland. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> oh man, he came to the same conclusion everybody else did. <laughs> Holy man, fascism OP. Mm, yeah, it really is. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, even without all these bonuses for fascism, going fascist would still be easy mode, simply because you join the Axis and you don't have to worry about Germany invading you. Yeah. So even without these bonuses, fascist would still be easier. But then you get 7.5% maximum recruitable population. No, just 7. Just no, 7. Extra point. Yeah, but 7%, that's insane. Yeah. That's crazy good. Yeah, that is. And like, by going... Even if you're scraping the barrel, mm -hmm. 7% yeah. is an extra third. Yeah, not to mention you can also switch to extensive conscription without being at war, which is yeah. additional 5%. Over so to be fair, you probably don't need it. Yeah, um, but you can get extra 2.5 compared to I limited mean, I conscription. I mean, really, the thing, the real kicker for fascism is that you can switch to work on mm, it without yeah, being that's at war. Yeah, yep. that's That's the kicker there. But in our case, every little bit of manpower will help. Yep. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm sure by the end of it, we'll all- we'll both be on at least all adults serve. Yeah. Oh, I have a 15% political power gain guy. Might be worth nice. it right at the start. I- I went with, uh, a captain of industry mm -hmm. to improve my civilian factory building speed. I don't think I have that. Yeah, darn. Oh yeah, actually I do. Huh. In that case, I recommend him. Yep. Nice. Okay, 58.5. Not bad. Uh. The good news is at least some people are buying my oil, mm -hmm. and the Soviets are buying rubber from me a little bit. A little bit. You have like 500 friggin' rubber. Yeah, the problem is everyone just buys the UK's mm -hmm. rubber instead. Oh, okay. So, yeah, the, the, UK, the UK is the primary exporter of rubber, and Siam. So, I, I don't get to sell anywhere near as much rubber. That said, as Belgium, at least Switzerland's buying some of your steel. Yeah. Unfortunately, everyone's too busy buying the goddamn United States' steel. Yeah. Because, you know, it makes more sense to have it delivered from the US rather than yeah. buy it in Europe. Yep. A lot of countries seem to like to cling to the largest producer mm. of a thing and buy from them. So even though it would make no damn sense whatsoever. Yeah. If you are the logistic cost. Yeah, I, I'd go for the biggest damn producer. I'm not going to be at war with on my continent. Yeah. That way, I don't have to use convoys for it. Then again, I do have 500 convoys. I can probably buy from whoever the damn well hell I please. You know, it will be funny if this ends up being like a free episode game <laughs> because we'll get destroyed by Germany. You're, you're diving into an early army effort, aren't you? Yep, I want that Lance Doctrine bonus to start fair switching point. over early. That's fair, that's fair. Yeah. 
I'm I'm going down the more conservative uh, industry path. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get all three of the construction efforts. That's a. Uh, then I'll probably yeah, be grabbing the. I don't know. I guess I could go for the military factories first. That might be worth it. I should probably grab the extra research slot. Yeah. I'm not actually sure if I'll get to army effort because mm-hmm. I might want to go down political effort as well and get deterrence yes. for the extra military factory production speed. Which will uh, also play a bit of a key role at some what point. What do you have enough slots for all of that? Uh, what do you mean enough slots? Well, once you run out of slots to build factories. Um, yeah. But uh, you should be rushing the industry techs right mm. now. Like, I'm currently... Uh, yeah, I am researching two out of three industry techs. Yeah, I'm currently researching three out of three. Or no, wait, two out of three. I'm researching a doctrine. Um, yeah. Like, w- once you get construction effort two, mm-hmm. yeah, it'll help. The British Parliament debates intervention in <laughs> the Benelu region. <laughs> what? Okay, who's going fascist around here? I'm not. No, it's you. No. You have 11% fascism. Well, I don't know what from. I don't have a fascist advisor. Yeah, whatever you do, don't go above 20% or Britain will invade Mm. our ass. Mm. Just an FYI. I think it just starts with 11. It might. I have zero daily change. I'm pretty sure it just started the game with 11. It might. I've never never seen Britain do that that early, though. Mm. Uh, I know they have need a minimum requirement of one of us having 10% fascism for that, mm-hmm. though. Yeah. So. As I said, I'm pretty sure Belgium just starts with 11%. Yeah. Because I have zero daily change. Yeah. Secure Belgium. They've completed the Benelu intervention. Mm-hmm. One or more of the following must be true. More than 20% support for the communists, or more than 20% support for the fascists. Pro tip, don't go above 20% of a uh, non-democratic party. (laughs) Or else. I mean, you can, (laughs) if you want to. If that's your strategy. That's a a pretty bad strategy, I'm afraid. I mean, might just drive us into the arms of Germany. Who knows? That said, uh, is it about time we made a cut? Yep, I think so. All right. Well... Thanks for watching, everyone. Even Mm. though not a whole lot is happening just yet, but there will be. Hey, I I, talk to the speaker yourself. I built a whole two civilian factories. Mm -hmm. Go you. Actually, I built a whole three civilian factories. Ha ha. Yeah, okay. Not a lot has happened. I'll finish mine in four days. (laughs) (laughs) So thanks for watching, everyone. See you next time. See you next time.